Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 33 of Perfect Inspiration. My name is Brian Matias, and I am joined today with my colleague, uh, Candice Christensen, who is the managing editor at the On One Marketplace here. So you may have visited the On One Marketplace, hopefully you have, and purchased some beautiful presets or templates um, or backgrounds or textures that we sell there. Uh, Candice, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, so Candice was nice enough to let us uh, work with images of her daughter, Anna, beautiful girl. And the reason why we wanted to do this was, um, so tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of, you know, this shot and what you like to do um, and how you came up with these kinds of ideas. Sure. I took these photos um, three, four years ago when my daughter was four and I happened to notice one day that she was wearing this cute themed outfit and she was going to outgrow it soon. And so I wanted to take a photo of her and I had recently seen... Um, a blog post online from a photographer that I liked. Her name is Amy Rose King, and she's out of Lubbock, Texas. And she had some behind the scenes shots of how she did some holiday portraits. And, I, and she was kind enough to do a pullback shot and realized that all she was using as a backdrop was wrapping paper. Wrapping to paper. The wall. Like you would buy at a pharmacy or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was curious and I wanted to try it on this day when I noticed that she was wearing this themed outfit. So picked her up from preschool and we stopped the tree next to our house, you know, next to our preschool, and they had wrapping paper, and it matched perfectly. And this is the wrapping paper. Yeah, Dollar Tree wrapping paper. Yeah. And so just got a roll of it and took it home, and after we had lunch, you know, we went upstairs, and uh, the best place we had to do it was in our spare bedroom. It's a south-facing room, and so, you know, here we have the the wrapping paper taped to the wall. Yeah, right over the here. Door. Yeah. You know, all it was was, you know, three feet of linear space on the wall and some blank space in front of it. And so there was a window to the west there where you can see, so there would be side light in. And then um, on the south facing wall, there's these three small windows to provide light the other way. So it was a really simple setup and it was probably raining the day I did it as it always is in Portland in November. Oh, sure. And so, yeah, it was just setting it up in the bedroom. And this is, this is really great because, um, you know, Candace and I were talking about this right before we started recording, um, where it's so true that a lot of photographers, they get we get hung up on the small details and the gear, and I need all of these modifiers, and I need everything before I can even try to do something uh, with my camera that I already have. The only thing you really need is your camera, a lens, and, and that creativity. And so when, when Candace told me about the story, I, I immediately thought it would be not only great for uh, a perfect inspiration episode, but actually for two. Um, in this first one, we're, you know, we're going to, Candace showed you kind of what you can do with some simple window lighting and a, uh, a ream of wrapping paper. Um, and it really, I mean, look at the images. These are the raw images straight out of camera. Uh, here's one of them right here. Actually, let me just move it right here. Um, this is Anna right here. There's another shot, and you can see there's the wrapping paper behind her, um, and then also just some candy canes. Yeah, when um, in the photo shoot that was inspiring me, you know, she had candy canes in it, and when we were in the Dollar Tree, they also had packages of fake dollar candy tree, candy cane ornaments, and so we bought two of them. That's awesome, and I mean, that's to me, it's these props that you know. Why do you have to go out and spend, you know, all this money for all the, like, I know that, that the companies do sell those, like, fake backgrounds or the simulated backgrounds, but really, the wrapping paper does a perfect job, and how much did it cost? A dollar. A dollar. So, you know, photographers, especially these days, we need to be economical, um, get the most bang for our buck, and sure, this is Candace's daughter, but if this was a client, you know, the, the shot would turn out great, and your only, your overhead is or two dollars or three dollars for the candy canes and for the uh, wrapping paper and so these shots came out great you know um it, it's just look at this is a perfect example you know you took the prop of this cupcake here um but because you shot with such a shallow depth of field such a wide aperture it looks like a beautiful background and it, and it fits the theme perfectly so candace was nice enough to let me actually work on the images um she was here with me and we're going to go through them right now um, and, and I want to show you this is going to be more about batching um, so here's what we're going to do let's go here first to this image this is going to be kind of the image that we're going to base on and what uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you over here um, under the history we already worked on it a bit but let's start from the beginning this is the straight out of camera shot and so 
I don't do portrait images very much. I, I don't, you know, it's no, no secret. And so um, when Candace and I were working, I would look at her and I'd say, is this okay? You know, do you like this? And, you know, there's definitely a difference in style. You like the cleaner stuff, right? I do, yes. Um, yeah, and for portraits, that makes sense. For, for the stuff that I do, I tend to go for more of the really abrupt, you know, in-your-face stylization. But the first thing that I want to do here is get the correct white balance. So I'm going to take the white balance dropper here in Lightroom, and I'm going to click right here kind of in the whites of her eyes. You can see that it does a really nice job of shifting the temperature and the tint of the image. Um, now, what I want to do is do some very basic color correction, uh, or actually some exposure correction. I'm going to bring up the exposure just a bit, um, and I'm also going to bring up a little bit of contrast and drop the clarity just a tiny bit. Uh, and what it does is it just kind of evens out this portrait. It makes it look really nice, really accurate. Um, and here's where the fun happens. So um, one of the quotes I always like about portrait photography is that all life starts with the eyes. So what I want to do is bring out the eyes. And there, we can do that really easily with the adjustment brush in Lightroom. I'm going to start by going to the exposure slider. I'm going to bring that up a bit, and I'm also going to bring up the clarity, which is going to add a little bit of a kind of a local contrast boost. It's going to give the eyes a bit more teeth, as it were, a little bit more kind of texture. And so I'm just going to paint here, and you can see how we're bringing uh, this area out. Now, I'm going to do it to both eyes first before I do any adjustments. And now that we've done that, if the eyes are too bright or too dark, the great thing about the adjustment brush is that it's dynamic. So if I wanted to make it brighter, I could, or we don't want to give poor Anna demon eyes. <laughs> So I'm going to make it, I don't need that much of a, a pronounced eyes, but this is a really nice job here. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the same settings, except this time I'm just going to draw on the teeth and bring uh, out the teeth just a bit more. Now, um, the one piece of advice that I can give you that I like about the adjustment brush is make sure you use this auto mask, the auto mask checkbox. And what that does is it automatically samples the colors that you're drawing on. So it'll prevent uh, the selections from going, say, onto the lashes or onto the lips. Um, so you can see that little bit of um, really nice adjustment. And here's a tip, and we're going to share this with you in the download section, but you can actually save any of these brushes as your own. So let's say I want to save this as a, kind of an eye and toothbrush. Under, next to the effect uh, dropdown, uh, you can go to the very bottom here and click Save Current Setting as New Preset. And so I'm going to call this uh, Eye and Mouth Brush, and I'll hit Create. And so we'll give you this brush uh, to download. All you need to do is import it into Lightroom. Um, but the great thing is, is you don't have to do anything else. All you have to do is start drawing. You'll drop down, and it'll be right here, Eye and Mouth Brush, and you can start having fun. So now that we're done with the basic controls, we're going to send this over to uh, Perfect Layers. And the reason why we're going to do that is because I want to get rid of some of these uh, little kind of stray uh, fuzzies and hairs. Uh, so I'm going to go to File, Plugin Extras, and select Perfect Layers. All right, Candace. so what, what are these uh, little hairs down here? Uh, we have a dog. And yes, I neglected to vacuum before we started doing a photo shoot. So as a tip, always vacuum or dust or wipe off the floor before you start doing it if you're doing floor shots because it's way easier to do that in three minutes than to do it, it It's so <laughs> editing. Absolutely, and, and no problem because uh, in Photoshop we've got the kind of retouch brush, so I'm just gonna draw a few quick selections here um, and remove that information. I'm gonna make these brushes a bit smaller, get it especially off of the skin of anywhere else, that's really where I wanna remove it from. Um, and so I'm gonna go here and just get rid of that stuff. Uh, and that's good right there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go to Effects to start stylizing, and it's going to be really quick and really easy. All right, so in Perfect Effects, there are only two quick effects I want to apply. Under Glow, there's a really nice one called Charge More. Uh, this was named after uh, an effect we used to have in Photo Tools called Charge More Money Glow, and um, people wanted it really badly, so we rebuilt it for Perfect Effects 4. Only thing is, at 100%, it just doesn't look right, so we're going to bring that down to zero. And we're only going to add uh, about maybe 36% of it, really not that much. Then we're going to hit Add. I'm going to click uh, the Glow category to close it. And I'm going to go to the Portrait category for Enhancing. And I'm going to select the first one called Anime. And I really like this one because it just brightens the image, almost kind of a high-key look. I'm going to bring that to zero as well. And just bring it up 
just a bit right around there. So you get this really nice kind of almost coolish temperature look. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the masking brush though. And with the perfect brush option turned on, I'm going to remove this effect from uh, the eyes and uh, the eyelashes because it's kind of softening those up. I'm also going to remove it from the teeth. Okay, so there we go. Um, and this is something you always want to pay attention to when you're doing portraits is um, the eyes, the teeth, the lips, they really should be the sharpest parts of the face. Uh, so what I'm doing is by using the masking brush, I'm able to remove the effect from those areas. Uh, and we're gonna we're giving away this preset too, so uh, you can achieve this look just by clicking on the preset. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, and we'll return back to Lightroom to finish things off. All right, so we're back in the develop module of Lightroom, and we're just gonna finish things off here. I'm gonna add a little bit of a contrast boost. I'm gonna bring back some clarity, and I'm gonna add a little bit of vibrance. Um, now, the last thing I'll do, go down to the bottom, add a little bit of a vignette. I forgot to do it in perfect effects. When you use the um, preset that we built, you'll see that there's also a subtle vignette there. So I'm kind of complementing it here. I'm gonna bring closer to the midpoint so that really the face and the cupcake are uh, the points of focus. And there you go. I mean, that's uh, here's our original image. Beautiful image. I mean, all starts with the photographer, beautiful model. You have a beautiful daughter, Candace. Thank you. Um, and then we just kind of, you know, add a little bit of style. Is this, would this fit with you? Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's the real fun part. Um, you've made it this far. We still have, as you can see in the grid, three more images. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to batch that perfect effect uh, preset that we created to all three images. To do that, I'm going to select these three images. I'm going to go to the File menu and then go to Export. Now, with that done, I'm going to go to Hard Drive and I'm going to select Perfect Effects 4. At the top here, you're going to see the category drop down, and you're going to go to the category that you create. So in this case here, I created PE4, and then there's the preset called Anna's Day. Now, you can go ahead here if you want and apply any of your um, settings to the file. I'm not going to resize anything, and uh, this is up to you how you want to do it. But when you're done, click Export to batch through, uh, and you'll see what we get. All right, so when you're done with the batch, as you can see, uh, the really nice thing is that here we have the images that have the perfect effects preset applied to them and the last thing I'm going to do is we just did a pre uh, or a batch of the presets and perfect effects now let's sync those uh, final Lightroom settings that we just made um, across the same images to do that I'm going to start by selecting the original image and then I'm going to press the command key on a Mac or the control P key on a PC and I'm going to select those new batched images so Here's our original images and the three batched images. Now, I'm gonna bring out the right column and I'm gonna click on the sync settings button on the bottom right over here. I'm gonna check all and I'm gonna deselect crop. In this case here, I didn't crop anything so I don't wanna sync any crop settings. But now I'm gonna hit synchronize. And what will happen is Lightroom will sync all of the changes that we made on the first image to all of the others and so you're gonna have a consistent look. Now, the last thing that I would do is, personally, I would go here to the images where you see Anna's eyes. I'd go back to the develop module and open up that trusty brush preset we just built, eye and mouth. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna just paint on the eyes. And you can see how the eyes really just pop. So that's one image, and then here is the other image. So, same thing, develop module, adjustment brush, eye and mouth brush is already selected. I'm gonna go ahead here and just draw on the eyes. All right, so Candace, we've gone ahead. Let's actually go ahead and just uh, select these images and we'll browse through them really quickly. So um, here's image one, image two, image three, image four. And the great thing is, is that um, they all have a consistent look. They all have a consistent style. And when we tune back into part two next week, we're gonna show you how we're gonna lay this out for a holiday card, right? Excellent. So uh, with that, I want to thank you all, and I look forward to seeing you next week for episode number 34. Bye-bye.